it is time for February's update on the Reef Berry Pi DIY Aquarium Controller. We have a lot to talk about tonight, so I'm going to jump right into it. And I figure um, we'll start with a little overview of the architecture, uh, how this thing's put together. I don't think we've really uh, gone into that before. So I've got a few slides uh, put together, which I can share with you. And we'll jump right into that. And hopefully you find this interesting. I know at least a few of you guys out there have been asking some questions about how this is all put together. So uh, this is for you guys. Um, and if you're not interested with this, just stick with us for a few minutes. We're going to get into a little bit of a demonstration at the end. Uh, but anyway, uh, we won't spend a lot of time on this, but just as a quick overview, uh, Reefberry Pi is my DIY aquarium controller. It is running on a Raspberry Pi, a single board computer. And of course, it is running on Raspbian OS, which is a flavor of Linux, uh, which ships with the Raspberry Pi. My project is written in Python. That's the program language uh, that I chose to work with. Uh, we could have used anything, uh, but I decided to go with this one. Um, so. That's what uh, most of this has been based around. And it's been working out really well for me, and I think it was a good choice. Uh, which means um, I got to use uh, this TK Inter uh, toolkit. This is the TK interface for uh, Python. Um, basically, what this is is the uh, toolkit that I'm using to uh, create only the graphical user interface elements uh, in parts of my application, uh, display the windows, the buttons, all that sort of thing. It's all being done through tkinter. Matplotlib uh, is the library that I'm using to handle all of the uh, charting elements, you know, the graphs, the plots, all that stuff. Um, I'm using matplotlib, great toolkit. AMQP, Advanced Message Queuing Protocol. This is really at the heart of what I'm doing. We're going to be talking a lot about this in just a little bit. Uh, but just to know, this is uh, you know an industry standard way of passing information around, uh, which is really key to what I'm doing here. And I will be using RabbitMQ, uh, which is the messaging exchange uh, which will be working with this AMQP protocol. Uh, all of this stuff is open source software. It's all free. It's all available on the Raspberry Pi. Um, and you know, since I'm using AMQP, RabbitMQ, uh, I was able to do some things uh, with Node-RED, which is another uh, nice package which is available on the Raspberry Pi. I think it ships with all uh, versions of Raspbian. And this is another programming toolkit, which we'll show a little bit about that. I wanted to use that for some specific things. And then uh, some things that I am not using yet, but I'm thinking about using in the future. InfluxDB. This is a time series database. I think this will work really well with uh, some of the things that I'm doing. So I'm exploring some options there. And Grafana which really goes hand in hand with Influx. Uh, and this is a data visualization and analysis package. And, you know, if I go this route, I think this will be a really good fit and allow us to uh, really take a deep dive into uh, some of the data that we're going to be acquiring. So all these things on the screen here are really you know, some of the key technologies uh, that I've got integrated in with the Reefberry Pi, and we're going to be talking a little bit about uh, some of these things tonight. All right, with that out of the way, uh, we can talk about how all of that fits together. <coughs> so the core of my project uh, is the server application. I've got some software written. Uh, it is the server software. Uh, and basically what this does is it just runs in a loop and it communicates with all of the hardware, all of the sensors, it acquires the data, 
Um, it applies you know, the aquarium rules and logic uh, to the data that it acquires. Uh, it's responsible for logging that you know, data out to the files. And it just you know runs over and over again, you know, applying all the rules and you know deciding on you know what to do, you know which outlets to open, which outlets to close, uh, you know based on the inputs that it's getting from you know, all the various sensors like the temperature, the pH, you know all of that stuff. Uh, this is great, and you know everything works you know fine that way. But you as a user, you know you want to know you know what's going on in the server, obviously. Um, you need to keep tabs on things. Um, so what I did was I wrote a user interface uh, for the server. This way it could display to me, the user, uh, you know, various things like the temperature, you know, the pH, you know, what state the outlets were in and you know, everything like that. This worked fine. Um, but going this route really did limit me in ways that I you know, did not want to be limited. Um, so I quickly realized that, you know, Placing the user interface in there with the server, um, adding that onto there probably wasn't the best idea. Um, so I decided, you know, that had to go. That that, that wasn't the way to to do things. Um, it did work, and I could, you know, do stuff like this, but that's not the route that I wanted to go with this. So I pulled the user interface, you know, out of the server. I let the server be the server, do what it's good at. Um, you know, interface with the hardware, uh, do all the things it needs to do. But don't worry about you know any of the user interface elements or anything like that. I pulled all that out and uh, put it into its own application. So this way, you know, the server does its thing and the application can do its thing, uh, just you know based on all the data created by the server. Well, this leads to one you know very important uh, problem: How do I get the information from the server over to the application? And how do I get, you know, any commands sent from the application back to the server? They need a way to communicate. And there are, you know, several options you could have, you know, taken. Uh, the route that I decided to take was to create a message exchange uh, between the server and the native application. And the message exchange that I chose to use is RabbitMQ. Uh, what this means is there's basically a piece of middleware uh, that's running uh, in between my server and my application. And what this does is it's responsible for passing all of the information from the server out to my application and, you know, vice versa. So what happens is uh, my server, you know, is running in its loop. And every time it has something to share, uh, it pushes out a status update you know, via this AMQP, which we talked about earlier. This is the Advanced Message Queuing Protocol. It's an industry standard way of, you know, doing things. And, you know, RabbitMQ, you know, speaks AMQP. Uh, so all of the status updates that get published from the server end up on the message exchange. And then what happens from here is, you know, the message exchange holds on to those messages and it looks, if it has any subscribers that are subscribed you know, to that particular exchange, uh, it'll forward those messages out you know, to the consumers, which in my case is my native application. So everything that gets you know, broadcast from the server hits the exchange. The exchange will then forward all that information out to the subscriber. And it works uh, really, really well. Um, I was really pleased with how you know, smooth this works. And, you know, it works in the opposite direction as well. If, you know, my application has anything to tell the server, it never talks directly to the server. It posts it onto the message exchange, and the message exchange uh, will forward that information uh, into the server where it can react upon, you know, things such as, you know, uh, if I click on a button and just say, hey, turn an outlet off, uh, this doesn't actually talk to the server. It tells the message exchange, and that forwards the message to the server. The server will, you know, apply the change and then broadcast out the status update, which will, you know, make its way back to the native application uh, so that it knows that, you know, whatever it wanted to do actually happened. Uh, works really, really well. Um, and you may think, you know, why go through all this trouble, you know, 
If you're just getting information from here to here, why have something in the middle? Well, there's a very important reason for that. Uh, this way, I completely, you know, obfuscate or, you know, take it away from uh, the server. It never needs to know who it's speaking to, you know, out here, you know, on the endpoint. It only ever needs to deliver the information to the message exchange, uh, which opens up a lot of possibilities, um, which means I could have any uh, other application out here on the end. It doesn't have to be the one that I wrote. Anything else can subscribe uh, to the message exchange and get the same information. Uh, this is very nice. The way I have it set up, it's called a fan out exchange. So this same information that comes into this exchange and gets broadcast out to this application uh, can be sent out to other applications. Um, and in my case, I decided to uh, use Node-RED. So Node-RED is now also subscribed to the exchange and it's able to pull the same information or it doesn't even pull the information. It gets pushed the information from the exchange. Anytime that it has something to say, you know, sends it out to Node-RED as well as my application. And my server over here never knows anything about you know, what's happening out here and doesn't care. It's only ever concerned with you know, putting the information out to the exchange and getting information back from the exchange. And that leaves it wide open out here for you know, whatever I wanna do. Um, all happens through the exchange and it keeps things you know, nice and tidy that way. And the reason that I also wanted to use Node-RED uh, was for you know one uh, particular thing, it has something called the dashboard, um, which I'll show in a little bit. And with the Node-RED dashboard, I'm able to make a nice web-based interface based on the data that's coming in you know, through AMQP to Node-RED. And this handles everything that I need to do um, to format that uh, data and present it in a nice dashboard that'll format on, you know, say an iPhone or, you know, whatever phone you decide to use, a tablet computer like an iPad, uh, your computer web browser. All of that is happening through Node-RED. Um, I didn't need to know anything about coding these HTML pages or anything. I just needed to know a few things about Node-RED, um, tell it, you know, what to do with the data. And it did all of the heavy work for me, um, you know, to make these nice, uh, dashboards for me and the server itself you know certainly didn't have anything to do with that it's just you know feeding the information out there providing it to node-red uh, or providing it to the exchange which is you know passing it down through here so both applications are now uh, getting the same information are able to act upon that and feedback and they're all you know sharing with the same information it's working out really good for me and that leaves open the possibility um which is where I will take this. Uh, I'm going to write my own, uh, you know, web application. So I've gone the native application route just because it's you know very easy for me to do right now, and I can get everything up and running. I also use Node-RED, you know, because it was available to me, and it was you know an easy way for me to get uh, a web-based interface into my server. Uh, but this is limited in certain ways, you know, using it this way, and it can get you know, kind of complicated with some of the things that I want to do. Uh, so what I will be doing um, is writing my own, you know, web application at some point in the future, uh, once I've got everything else nailed down. And I think I'll be able to, um, you know, really fully realize, you know, what I want to do with this uh, whole aquarium controller. So, you know, so far with this, I'm... I'm really happy with the way it's working out. I'll be able to demonstrate this in just uh, a few minutes. Uh, but with this architecture, this also leaves open, you know, lots of future possibilities, uh, such as, you know, cloud computing. Um, there's no reason why I couldn't have, you know, at some point in the future, uh, some server out in the cloud uh, that wanted to subscribe to my message exchange. and have all the same data, you know, push it out there to the cloud. Uh, sort of similar to how, uh, if you're familiar with Apex and they have Apex Fusion, which is kind of the cloud version, I, I could do something very similar with this, you know, just, you know, pass all the information out to the cloud. Um, and then if I need to, you know, send something back to the server, I could just send it right back through my message exchange. 
a lot of different things I could do there. Um, that's you know pretty far out there. No plans for that right now. But something more in the immediate future, uh, which is really much closer to reality, is you know with remote devices. And what I mean by this is, you know, I could set up some sensors, you know, running on some other platform uh, and just have them also subscribe to the message exchange and they could send the data that they want to send uh, right back into the server and the server could, you know, also command things back to there. Uh, for instance, you know, if my Reefberry Pi is on an aquarium on the second floor of my house, you know, running a, on a reef tank, and it's doing everything it needs to do for a reef tank. Um, what if I also want it to monitor, uh, say, my RO water reservoir in my basement, and I want it to have a water level sensor? Uh, well, that's in my basement. The Reefberry Pi is up on the second floor. Well, with this architecture, there's no reason why I couldn't set up uh, some sort of a device down in the basement, just hook it onto my Wi-Fi and have it feed you know, information back into uh, the network and you know, end up on my server application, which could then uh, you know, transmit that app back to any of the dashboards that I have running. So there's a lot of different possibilities here. Um, so uh, with that said, let's uh, take a little look at what we do have running so far and how it's working for us. All right, so I just looked at the time and I can't believe <laughs> we're hitting 15 minutes or thereabouts so far. Um, I guess I really like to talk about this stuff. Uh, but probably best that I just break this into two parts. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop this uh, video here. Um, so we'll just leave this part one as, you know, the architecture that I'll get into the demonstration in part two, uh, which I'll, you know, post, you know, right after this one. Um, but just some things that you have you know, to look forward to in part two is, you know, we'll show, you know, the actual, you know, user interface. You know, this is the native application. Here's the server over here. Uh, this is what's running on the Raspberry Pi. Um, we could take a look at, you know, the fan out exchange. You know, this is just the command line application that I have running on my MacBook. Um, you can see it's, you know, pulling out the data. Uh, and then, you know, how about, you know, the uh, dashboard that I made through Node-RED. Uh, that's also pulling out the same data. So I'll cover all of that stuff uh, in part two. So we'll cut this one off here. And if you made it to the end, I want to thank you guys for watching. And um, have any questions or anything, you know, leave them below. And I will catch you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.